and keeping track of everything that's going on, including some of the biggest personalities in this year's conference is our very own Ben Fazulin. Ben, good to see you. The conference is going to start tomorrow. So what's your first impression other than it's cold outside? Well, yeah, that, that is my first impression, that it's extremely cold here. Uh, the helicopters have been flying in, the business leaders and political elites and stars from all over the world. Uh, it's going to be an extremely interesting week, considering some of the big topics that are on the agenda, like China, security, oil, and the future of the economic world for you and me. Uh, there are some people that say here that financial networks now rule the world. One of those people is the author of the book, uh, Super Hubs. Uh, she's the CEO of Beyond Global and is here with me now, Sandra Navidi, a German lawyer and also an economic advisor. Tell me, how has it come to this point that financial networks, in your opinion, rule the world? Finance is the operating system of our society because it's essential for everything we do. And that gives the people at the very top enormous power individually, but particularly through their networks, they essentially multiply their, their power. Is it a good thing or a bad thing for us? Uh, are we living in a safer world with these guys in charge and women as well? Well, in general, we have created a level of complexity in our world through financialization, technologization, technology, globalization, that we are kind of trying to catch up with. And there's no one person who has control over this. I'm saying this is a complex self-organizing system where these people have enormous influence, but they don't have control over the system. So in that sense, those networks can be a force of good or it can be a force for bad. So potentially, how dangerous would you then say those networks are that have been built up over the years here in Dubbo? I wouldn't say that they're dangerous per se. I think in general networks are very helpful. They distinguish us from other species and that we cooperate. We now have the age of the, the human being, the, um, you know, because we have essentially taken over and that is because of our network uh, and our co cooperation. You're also part of this network. I'm part of the network just being here as a journalist. Why did you write the book? Because I think because it's a complex system and that we are all part of this system. I'm writing about the super hubs, which are the people at the center of the network, which are the, who are the best connected. But we're all nodes in the system and we're all affected. And so I wanted to provide an understanding for everybody. I've tried to explain it in simple terms because it's important to understand the system and its complexity and it, in its entirety. Has that system taken over what is the World Economic Forum? Have they taken over Davos and, and the forum that we have here? I wouldn't formulate it that drastically, but of course they have great influence. Take the head of the International Monetary Fund, Christine Lagarde, those people at the top and as, through their cooperation together, of course, they influence the world in which we live in significantly. And of course they work with CEOs of big corporations and you know other industry leaders. But I would say because of their financial firepower, you know, they, they determine where jobs are created, which industries are being financed, the private equity type. That, that's important. But this place is very far from the democratic world, from taxpayers, from the people who are paying for these people to make the decisions for them. Well, yes, but you could also argue that uh, they're acting in the interest of shareholders and also the World Economic Forum doesn't have a public mandate. Nothing can be really officially decided and implemented here, but it can also be a force of good. Like now we're talking about technology, which is going to kill many jobs. So here we can try and brainstorm for solutions. Lastly, it's a little ironic that you say in your book that some of the people here don't really have the competence that everyone thinks they could have, that there are lots of egos at play here that uh, fight against each other and ultimately don't reach the decisions they should be. Well, what I say is that uh, with regard to conspiracy theories, the competence of people, of just a few people forming a world government, that is highly exaggerated. Of course, most of these people are very, very competent in their fields, but as I said, they don't have control over the system and they can't rule the world all by themselves. Sandra Navidi, thank you very much. Great to have you on the show.